everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to analyze Ravel's Piano Sonatine in F sharp minor. The Sonatine has a rather interesting backstory to it. The first movement was completed in 1903 for the Paris Weekly Critical Review after a friend had encouraged him to do so. The competition required a first movement piano sonatina, no longer than 75 bars, and specifically had to be in F sharp minor. Ravel turned out to be the only participant, and he was even disqualified because his submission was longer than 75 bars. Nevertheless, he composed the other two movements of the sonatine and completed the work in 1905. The movement opens with a descending fourth interval, a key motive in the entire sonatine, which will reappear in the other movements, and we will call this motif X. The opening melody, is equally as important, and we shall term this theme X. It is in F sharp Aeolian, and it is present in both the soprano and bass, accompanied by a clockwork-like movement oscillating in between. Seemingly complicated to analyze, we can simply reduce it into its basic chordal structure, and we can see that it is simply moving in parallel chords. Ravel then elaborates on this basic structure to create a shimmering texture as accompaniment. The phrase is repeated with a subtle rhythmic displacement, but now continuing the melody. The bass is no longer doubling the melody, instead moving in parallel fifths with the melody. And Ravel chooses to use dominant nine chords again in parallel motion. Again, we can simplify the chordal structure to this. This is the A section of the exposition, and it is in F-sharp minor. The A section ended on an E dominant chord, and we'd expect it to lead into A major, the relative major, in the B section. Yet, Ravel chooses to do a small departure first into the tonal center of C sharp, as seen by a cadential movement from flat 7 to 1 here. Moving backwards a bit, we have a rather calm and subdued melody as the B team. Largely pentatonic in nature, and the accompaniment is a counter melody moving in parallel triads. The static nature of the melody and short cell repetitions have seemed to have had a rather strong influence on other French composers after Ravel. We move into a short episode featuring a sigh motif and Ravel uses a D-sharp half diminished chord, resolving into an F-sharp 7 chord. An unresolved G-sharp appoggiatura, placed at the top of the D-sharp chord, provides a tension characteristic to Ravel. We finally reach a perfect cadence, the first in the entire piece, with Ravel showing us he has indeed reached the relative major in A, like a traditional sonata form. Yet, the effect of the cadence is offset by the fact that the A major chord does not land on a strong beat, instead on an offbeat, 
and immediately shifting to the flat 7 chord. This small transition back to VA section utilizes the descending fourth motif X as a link, then quoting the very first three bars without the clockwork accompaniment. Skipping to the developmental section, Ravel continues the descending fourth motif over an F sharp dominant seven chord, then quoting sections of T max. Launched into a paraphrasing of T Max in B minor, under a different guise of harmony, yet still retaining the clockwork motion. We reach the second developmental section, where Ravel elaborates on the B theme over a constant accompaniment in the left hand. The theme rises and gets louder, with the accompanying harmony getting increasingly ambiguous, reaching a climax with a whole tone accompaniment. We finally reach the recapitulation, and the A section is pretty much the same as the exposition one, apart from the closing bars, where Ravel quickly switches between modes and dominant chords, in order to return to the F sharp tonal center. <laughs> to the A sharp tonal center first before moving into the parallel F sharp major instead of F sharp minor. The B section is the same as well, just transposed and we enter a small coda that concludes the piece. Fragments of theme X are heard and Ravel uses chromatic medians, flat 6 and flat 3 to act as cadences to the 1-9 chord. So that's the end of the analysis, I hope you enjoyed. In the next few videos we'll be looking at the second and third movement, and we'll see how Ravel reuses um, the same motifs and themes in the other movements to create a sense of coherency in the entire sonatine. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.